Good to see everybody. Uh, appreciate you being here. Just got done with the second practice. Had a pretty, pretty good uh, run with the rookies back a couple days ago. Fired up to be back up here at St. Joe's. So with that, I'll just open it up and let you roll. You uh, pried the ball loose a little bit against yeah. the starters. Can you talk about that? Well, it was emphasized last night in the meeting because I didn't feel like we got any yesterday. I don't know if you guys were here yesterday. There weren't as many reps yesterday, but I did think that the defense kind of took it up a notch. Good observation. When you yeah. can't hit, you need to do things like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're always talking. We chart the number of punch outs or, or attempts to punch out because we just feel like if it's ingrained that it'll show up on game day. Uh, now, last year we didn't get as many as – turnovers, fumbles as we're used to. So it's, it's been a big emphasis. And, and now I'll tell you what, the other thing that happens, I always say this, is it makes your offense better too. Because if they know our guys out there are going to be doing this, then they're going to tend to be high and tight. Coach, you're uh, running Josh Williams opposite Trent McDuffie. Uh, is that a product of Jalen still being out, or is, is it kind of his job to lose, or is it an open competition? No, it's pretty open. So you've got, you really got fighting for that. You really got, you got Josh, you got Jalen, you got NJ. Uh, NJ, uh, he, he would have had an interception today to the, your point. Um, somebody, he was, he was set to make it, but he's been coming on. You know, he was injured last year. But I think it's wide open, and, and I think all three of those guys know that. With the absence of the other from. I'm sorry. What do you like about Jaden so far? He's been able to do it around. You know, the one thing that sticks out about Jaden is he's tall and long. Um, and yeah, he's playing a bunch of different positions. It's kind of, he's going through what Chamari Connor went through last year, where, you know, you're trying to learn everything in the volume of the defense, and yet he's not just learning one spot. You know, there's, uh, I mean, Jay Reed, you know, we're not going to have for a little bit here. Um, and so it's a blessing and a curse, right? Jay Reed doesn't get the reps, but somebody else gets those reps, and right now it's Jaden that's benefiting from it. With the absence of LJ from last year, Absence of Lajarius. Yeah. Is Trent kind of stepping in? You just, you just, you just killed him. No. Yeah. Is Trent stepping into that leadership role? Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I mean, we, obviously, you guys know that um, almost every game we had LJ travel with the quote-unquote top receiver. Uh, whether we do that or not with Trent, we'll see. It'll just be a game-by-game -game plan. Uh, we'll see who the other corner is, who the nickel is. There's still a lot of unknowns right now. We got some work to do back there. We certainly miss LJ. I miss him every day. How much of replacing will be scheme versus you know, someone from particular taking those roles? Yeah, some of the scheme might change because uh, you know we'll see if we have uh, somebody that's going to step up and serve that particular role. Uh, if we don't, we go in another direction, find another way to do it. I mean, uh, there were, you guys know, in the years we've been here, we didn't always every game travel a corner. Sometimes we did. We did it a little bit when Traverius Ward was here. We did it with him, but it'll be a game-by-game -game thing. You mentioned NJ. Can you talk a little bit about how he looks now compared to before he, get, before he got hurt last year? Because you were really raving about how yeah. good he looked before, before he got hurt. That's a good point. You got a good memory. I thought he made a lot of plays last year during this camp. I forget exactly when he got hurt. I know we were indoors, but it was a little ways, right? We had some... And the reason I remember that is because, you know, we as coaches, we use a, you know, a library of tape. You know, when I'm sitting there talking about technique, and I know just last night there was one on there of NJ last year making a really good play. Um, he's getting there. I mean, he's a little rusty just because of all the time he had off. It's been a full year. I mean, if you'd ask him, he looks to me like he's moving around pretty good. Like, I don't see limitations, but he'd be a better guy to ask for that. Seeing with the linebackers, obviously, we're about to talk to Nick, but without Willie Gay, you know, how's that kind of working out? And yeah. Trying to figure that all out. Uh, oh, we're going to miss Willie's burst and speed and his energy. Loved having Willie around. You can't help but not like being around Willie Gay, right? But Drew, we got Drew's been here and has played that spot. Jack Cochran has been doing a terrific job, right? Leo's going to probably have different roles than he had last year. You know, in, in conjunction with Nick, we'll get some young guys out there. So hopefully... You know, if we can find five, six, however many linebackers and get some good ones. Let's wrap up. We'll start with Nate. Uh, Steve, the Pats are going to come on, I guess, in a few days. Just how eager are you to see Felix? Yeah. Um, and what do you want to maybe him to show, I guess, throughout the course of training? Yeah, I think you're dead on, Nate, that it, it, we need him to show in pads. I mean, it's a different ball game, especially for D linemen when you're in this kind of practice. But, yeah, we're going to be looking for some physicality, some growth in – 
his pass rush ability. I mean, Gia too, right? He made a great play in the Super Bowl, which I think was great for his confidence. Um, and I think we just, you know, if he keeps making plays like that, he's going to get more and more confident. I think it'll be good for his game. With uh, Justin being injured, know he's still out there. How much you rely on him to use his voice a little bit to yeah. coach? Yeah, I mentioned that. I, I told him, you know, we can use this as a positive and just have him dig deeper into the playbook. Like, like not just learn his position, learn the others. He does that anyway. I mean, you guys know Jay Reed's a pretty sharp dude. Um, but he's going to have to stay in tune, him and Jalen. You know, if you notice, they, they can't be involved in anything. But I noticed it today when we're doing a walkthrough. They're back there and physically in their mind and moving around into it. That, that's really important. Last two, Neil and Matt. Coach, what worries you the most about, about this year's team that's brought so far? The Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about right now. I'll be quite honest with you, really. I mean, listen, we know they're going to be all fired up, and that's a good football team. So that's, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Those pro football writers recognized you with the Lifetime Achievement Award earlier this year. So what does that mean to you? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because, first of all, I, I was humbled, right? Shocked, humbled, and concerned when you get an award that says uh, Lifetime Achievement on it. <laughs> that means you're getting old, right? But I do want to say this because uh, uh, Sid and Brad and Ted at time told, filled me in on the whole thing. And I know that there's some people in here that are involved in that. So I want to say thank you to those that, because I know that doesn't happen unless there's some kind of support. Here's the other thing I know about that kind of award. It's a, it's a team sport, and when you get an individual award, that means you are around really good people on good teams, good coaches, good players. So that's not lost on me. But thanks, Matt, because I did want to thank the people that, that helped out with that.